it's a bit much to ask an analyst to know about the legal aspects of GDPR because that's just one regulation. You've got um, e-privacy direct directive, which is also part of this. You've got all the privacy laws now coming out in America. Certainly the analyst needs to know what data is being collected and when and how. So where does the data go once it's being collected? How is that data gathered? Um, that's really important for the analyst to understand. So the, the implementation of this data is important. Often people suck up data into Google Analytics and they think that's their ecosystem and they're done because maybe uh, Google Analytics is a product they look at day to day. But often at the same time, there's almost the same data going directly to Facebook or to LinkedIn or to TikTok or to wherever. So um, there has to be a lot of thought given by the analysts as to where that data is coming from and know that and be able to explain that. Whether it's good or a bad thing, that's for legal to figure out. The first thing is to map out what tools you have. So map out what tracking pixels and marketing pixels actually load on your pages. Often people just don't know. Often you find out that some websites, 20, 30, 40, even 100 different pixels are being loaded every time a page loads. Um, also map out what cookies are being set. Uh, again, most people think it's only a handful because maybe that's all they're aware of. Um, you can find hundreds, literally hundreds of cookies being set. And once you understand that map, you probably ask yourself the question, do we need all of this? And the reason why less is more is less data means less risk. You know, less tools is less business risk. Because whenever you're collecting data, there's always the potential for things to go wrong. A data breach, uh, privacy breach. You really want to minimize your risk because at the end of the day, we all want to sleep at night. It doesn't mean um, get rid of any data that comes from the visitor journey. It just means stop duplicating and triplicating the same data, but sending it to multiple tools. Try and pick one tool as the source of truth, as the place to go to, to get your yeah, user experience data or your marketing data. Doesn't mean only use one tool, but it does mean think about whether all of these tools are actually required. There's this fear of missing out, isn't it? The FOMO of, you know, if, you, if you're not collecting all of the data all of the time with these multiple tools, you're missing out on something and it's the next, you know, silver bullet that's gonna make your business a fantastic success. Um, so there's a lot of resistance to doing that. And I, I kind of understand that. I would just think about doing, perhaps turning, if you're turning a tool off, Turn one off, one by one. Just start with one tool that is probably your least used um, tool and just see how that goes. I think you'd be surprised at just how little an impact that makes. A big part of what GDPR brought about was people thinking about where does this data go and not just in terms of which vendor, Google, Microsoft, Facebook or whoever, but where does it physically sit? What's important now is not so much where the data goes, but whether you have full control over it. Now, if you put data into the cloud, by definition, you're losing control because you're spreading your data over multiple geolocations and obviously more than one server. Um, so from a privacy point of view, if you have sensitive data or you really are um, wanting to isolate yourself from ad tech, so it's just your data and nobody else's, you need to think about storing your data in one geolocation. So typically from a European point of view, that's storing it in Europe. Now, cloud providers like Amazon and Google and Microsoft, they have uh, data centers in Europe, but they come under US jurisdiction. So the data is not under uh, European protection, it's under American protection. And the, the, the battle at the moment that's been going on between the EU and the U e US has been about what's the jurisdiction of data. And so the only way really to avoid a SCREMS 2 or even a SCREMS 3, that's very likely to come about, um, is to have your data not only located in Europe, but under uh, using a company that's under European jurisdiction.